you're listening to Honey, We Made a Disney Podcast. Two friends since first grade, now dads reliving the Disney movies we grew up on with our own kids. I'm JB Wagner. And I'm Eddie Ferguson. And today we are ring-tailed roars, drawn faster, shooting straighter, and drinking longer than any men alive as we ride cyclones and wrestle Disney's tall tale. But first, JB, how are you and the family? Wow, Eddie. Wow. I did not read what you had wrote down for that intro. <laughs> I was not emotionally prepared for that. <laughs> uh, at least I did it and uh, didn't leave you. You to... didn't make me do this one. Yeah. There are times when you you uh, dive into doing what I wrote and you're like, whoa, 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 whoa. Wait, wait, hold up. And, How do and I this pronounce would have been the humdinger. Again? Yes, this would have been uh, a big deal. Um, no, we're doing good. We had a long Easter weekend. I uh, had Friday off, so it's Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, so Saturday, I take, uh, I'm, uh, Sunday, I'll say this, Sunday morning, we had gone to uh, service the night before, and so Sunday, we are, it's just me and, the, me and, me and my two kids, we're playing at the park, uh, my wife has gone to go help prepare some food for dinner um that evening uh with at my mother-in-law's house and so i've got all the kids at the park and my daughter likes to do this thing where when we tell her to not do something or to do something she doesn't want to do she kind of like goes into protest mode and she what she does she lays herself she used to just throw herself on the ground then she realized she would hurt herself so she lays herself down really carefully onto the ground (laughs) she's laying on the ground then she can kick her feet and scream and i just laugh at it most of the time because it's adorable and it's kind of funny so there's a there's another family there and you're like is your daughter like yeah this is what she does but this time (laughs) she she pivoted a little bit and she just sat there and she just closed her eyes (laughs) and didn't do anything and it was starting it was funny and also like i've never seen her do this before what is going on right now and she just sat there eyes closed like she was like like laying out in the sun and my son comes over and he like pokes her and he's like sissy sissy (laughs) kicks her and she does nothing and the parent next to me is laughing but then starts getting kind of concerned then i'm like what is going on and so eventually i just go and i grab her pick her up and she does this like fake oh 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 where am i (laughs) i'm just like oh goodness baby so i had taken video of this happening because i was like this is so weird Send it to my wife, who's like preparing dinner, preparing with uh, my mother-in-law's home. So then probably 20 minutes later, I'm just walking with him, whatever. And my wife calls me and she's like, is, is Sissy okay? Is everything okay? What's going on? And she was so freaked out by the, the video of our daughter just like laying there still motionless <laughs> on the ground and not doing anything when my son pokes at her. It was, it was crazy. It was the most random part protest part did she just get comfy and just like fall asleep right then and there it was it was weird it was weird i I love it when kids act uncharacteristically in front of other people yep Mm -hmm. that one kind of makes you look (laughs) like a like you don't know your own kid Mm -hmm. um but then also you know you 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 also don't know how to respond you don't know how to deal with it yep oh kids 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 that's really funny though <laughs> yeah at least you got it on camera so you can i did i will send it to you hold after it this. over her head for years to come and you can too because i will send it to you after we're okay. done good, or maybe good, maybe good. while you're talking about the next thing i'll just text it to you no we we do this all the time when our either of our kids are making quite the scene it's like and we're recording you We've yep. got a we've got to have record of this. So, yes, mm-hmm. we've got we've got a great video of Lewis freaking out over sunscreen that will come up on graduation sometime or wedding in the future. We're yep. just going to hold on to it. So that's the good <laughs> stuff. That's the, that's the gold gold nuggets right there. Oh, my goodness. Well, not too much in news this week, except for the fact that. A particular show on Disney Plus actually turned out to be watchable and decent and, dare I say, enjoyable. 
Eddie, I think I texted you about this and you were afraid to watch the new The Mighty Ducks Game Changers series. We have we've talked about this before. I didn't realize right. you were so hesitant to watch this. So, I mean, we've reviewed the first two Mighty Ducks uh, movies, films, we should really call them, uh, here on our podcast. And I think you may have picked up in reviewing both of those films. Big Mighty Ducks fan. Love big, Mighty big Ducks. Big Mighty Ducks fan. Big, big, big Mighty Ducks fan. So I was I was a little hesitant. Uh-oh, they're, they're really, you know, I don't like the remakes. You know, I, I dog on them all the time here. And so I was really hesitant. What are we going to do? And then that trailer dropped. And it was awful. The trailer <laughs> just... <laughs> I don't even think I, I could make it through the trailer. Like, I don't even want to watch this. Why would I want to watch the TV show? So it had been out for at least a week. And you had texted me and said, I, I have to go back. And, but you, you said something to the effect of, have you watched it yet? They should fire whoever made the trailer. Yep. And I was like, what? Uh-oh. So. Why did you send that? Because I loved a few of the changes. Well, one, yes, the trailer did not do justice for what the actual tone feel. Anything about it. The, the trailer is mostly about Gordon Bombay and um, what's her name? The mom. But the, the, it, this is like the original. My, it's mostly about these kids. Yes. Mostly about the interaction. This like ragtag group of kids. No, what really set the tone for me was that I was super excited about that kind of hooked me in that first episode was the villain of this of this show is it is sports parents yes. that are too much. Yes. That's when I realized that's what this show was going to be the real villain of this show was going to be I was like where do I sign up? This is great. This is what I'm here for. Uh, we are living in the age of parents doing anything they can to get their kids into the perfect college. We are living in the age of parents taking sports way too seriously for kids who probably aren't that good. I just uh, talked to a coworker about the, the the things they were dealing with, with their son who played baseball and all the politicking going on. So when I saw this and I started getting a sense, oh, this is who this show is about. I was like, ooh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm in for this. Yeah, there's that whole scene when she is sitting in the stands with all the other parents early on in the first episode, and it just starts going at like college counselors for 10-year-olds yep. and mm -hmm. uh, the sports clinics all summer long where they have no time to do anything fun. It was like, wait a second. This, this is the things that drive me nuts. This is phenomenal. Yes. Um, and I think what surprised me about this is um, they're not trying to recreate the original. No. But they not are taking the elements that we like about the original, the uh, witty one-liners, uh, misfit group of kids, um, a redemption story for the adults and just kind of throw them all together with these, with these just kind of crazy moments and giving us, you know, some entertainment. And that's, that's definitely what they're doing. And the, and, and I got, Oh, sorry, go. And the real star of this is you already know where I'm going with this. The real star of this is Nick Gaines, the <laughs> podcast kid who is now on the team it doesn't give anything away by me telling you that. That kid is so lovable and yeah. so endearing and so pure of heart that I want all the best things for this kid. And, and this is his real name in life is Maxwell Simpkins. Yes. <laughs> Enough said. I don't like just listening to his real name just makes you go. And I want to hug don't this kid. I just want to hold him and, and, and keep him safe. We need to I protect don't know. him. I don't know. Is it because he's the podcast character and here we are on our own podcast? Oh, it's so perfect. Or 
I think the moment that really sold it is, yes, he's got his moment there in the arena when he's doing the podcast. But then when he's like out on the porch with a little microphone on his (laughs) trying to get an exclusive interview with his mom, with it, with his name, with uh, with uh, Lauren Graham, oh, out uh, uh, Evan's mom. Yes. Thought, and and, she, and she's thought, like, well, no, not right now. And he's like, I'm coming over there. And he just walks over and comes there. right over. And then if that wasn't enough, like it bumped it even to another level when he's like still recording his podcast from the locker room or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like, yes, yes. I love this kid. I love this. Kid the so commitment much. to this middle school. Not even. Is it just upper elementary podcast for this? This this mighty ducks. Uh, yeah, we're talking like a just, fifth grader. Is so good. I don't. I don't uh, it. He is so endearing in this that I'm just like, yes, I'm here to see. Make sure this kid is is treated with respect that he is due. Um, my other favorite character is the Sailor Moon girl. <laughs> Sailor Moon. <laughs> I can't even remember her character. Uh, so her name is Lauren Gibby. She's played by Bella <laughs> Higginbotham. Which yes. is which is great. No, she also deserves all the good things in life. No, she Ugh. she is special. They just they just hit it out of the park with the characters of I, all of these kids. I love that they set up Logan. Like, oh, he's got all the nice things. He's got yes. all the rice skates. He's moved into town. They're as finally going to have doing- a good player on it, and then he can't skate. <laughs> but we I'm all sorry, know that giving- kid. We all know that kid. That's all got nice, all yeah. the gear, mm-hmm. should do great with all of this, gets all the intention, and has zero, no. zero talent. There's, uh, there's... Yes. <laughs> when he forms a tripod, when he's got, like, the, the he's got to keep his he's hockey stick. He's got to keep his hockey stick on the ice. Otherwise, he can't otherwise, skate. Yep. Yeah. It's uh, just stuff like that. That goes, going all the way back, right? Like, the original movies, what we loved about them is those little sticks, the one-liners, the just... That they that they would just play so well, and I think that's what does this. Uh, what makes this uh, uh, at least these first two episodes very funny, very entertaining, and I think in part is because this they brought back the original guys, right? This is Steve Brill, Josh Goldsmith, the guy oh, okay. uh, guy who wrote it, who did the original um, movies. They brought back those guys, so they they know the true heartfelt formula. This isn't somebody trying to mimic it. Yeah, so well done. First first two episodes. We'll see. It's it's campy. It's oh sure. It, yeah. it, it's 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 not high. It's not highbrow comedy by any any stretch of the imagination. But it is fun, and I'm in on this initial attempt at what they're doing. I'm so I'm, I'm here for six it. episodes in this first season. Is that it? I, as I read it right now. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, what um, it, I, we've enjoyed about it is even our two and a half year old will sit and watch this with oh, us. Oh, cool. I don't know if I've and watched he, it with uh, my son yet. He, he thinks it's funny. Well, so, there I mean, you go. it's just it's just kind of fun to be able to have something goofy like this to sit down and watch as a whole family. So, um, we, before- we liked it. Before we, we I, I have a feeling we'll be doing a full episode review, a full season review, probably. Once that's we, what I mean. We're done. A, f- a full episode of our podcast. Yes. Dedicated. One, one last note. Um, so, of course, they bring back uh, Emilio Estevez for this as the one. I'm sure they're going to bring back other people, especially based off of the thing you sent me earlier. I bet you they bring back a few other cameos. Oh, yeah. In this uh, in this season, or maybe it's next season, I don't know. But I'm just looking at Emilio Estevez's IMDb. Like, what has he done since? And I, I was pretty sure he was mostly off the radar, except for uh, his mm. performance in The Way with his father. One of my favorite movies. He mm. he wrote and directed that movie. Yep, The Way. The I one- love that movie really good stuff but yeah right after right after all the mighty ducks movies he kind of i mean he's he got credits but they're just kind of here or there i love that he was on two and a half men an episode of two and a half men with charlie sheen his um, brother his brother um but there's a and uh he was in bobby too i forgot about that um yeah. but yes yeah, so well, it was it was fun wrote, to see 
he wrote and directed Bobby. That's right. So that's right. that's, that's the been the big thrust of his career He's ever since directing. the Ducks' writing and directing. No, but I, I I appreciated his his take so far. He know he knows what he's doing. You can kind of see the twinkle in his eye, but he's being the cranky, ornery um, guy who runs the ice skating rink and won't let hockey in. Are we going to get a Martin Sheen cameo? That's, I hope so. That'd be fun. That I, I, is when I, I will call you and start screaming. Start screaming, <laughs> Jimmy! Jimmy! <laughs> Oh no, goodness! But it is good. I only I only texted you a few quotes. You did. You sent me a few a uh, few quotes. Some uh, some Alex Morrow f- quotes. I love the guy who says uh, the Ducks coach who says, "Yeah, that's just something I got off the internet, and I'm phasing <laughs> it out now." That's right. It was the Ducks coach. It wasn't Lauren Graham. That's yes, right. and then uh, the mom still cutting grapes in half, and then our favorite Nick. He's like. I get it. That's why I stick to raisins. <laughs> oh, but we will save our full review for later on when we have the full season dropped. Yes, yes. But now we are ready for the reason that you are wanting to listen to the show. Maybe, maybe not. We'll see. Uh, <laughs> and that is to review our next film in 1995. There was another film we tried to do, but it wasn't on Disney Plus and no one wanted to buy it. So we are going to do <laughs> the movie Tall Tale. Cue the Disney sound effect. Okay, IMDb description. For a tall tale is this. <clears throat> a young boy's imagination summons cowboy legend Pecos Bill who helps him save the family farm from a greedy land grabber. With the help of a lumberjack and a railroad worker, they all embark on a surprise-filled adventure. Sure. (laughs) That's good. Fairly accurate. Yep, fairly accurate. Only, although Pecos Bill is the only one getting uh, name recognition in there and no... um, Yeah, this is what's interesting because you get, uh, so this movie calls upon the Americana folklore of Pecos Bill, uh, Paul Bunyan, John Henry, and Calamity Jane as kind of your four main characters of America folklore, Um, which is, which is fun. And and, and I got to tell you, right up front, this was a Go to Ferguson Friday night um, movie. We okay. we grew up watching Tall Tale all the time, and when um, Disney Plus came out, this was one of the first movies we all watched together. Like hmm. the whole extended family and everybody come together. It was like finally we can watch Tall Tale again. I know I've I know I've previously seen this at least once before. Maybe a couple times, but it was uh, it was when I was like, I think I've seen this before. I think so. Yeah, I remember a scene. Oh, that was from this film. Oh, yeah, that is right. Wasn't there like a thing with a pile driver versus a uh, an engine, a steam engine? Oh, yeah. yeah, that was in here. There it is. Um, yep. So the thing I'm still, I remember that was in that film. The the whole scene with um, uh, Henry versus them the machine pile driving uh-huh. the railroad stakes and i still don't have an answer for it. and i remember seeing it as a kid like wait this isn't this isn't working this math is not adding up and i still don't have an answer for it the he is in a competition i know this we're jumping straight into jb's random questions mm, that he has go for, for it henry has to drill in tons of those stakes and the machine only has to do one <laughs> <laughs> I'm still confused by that. I was confused when I was uh, eight years old when this thing came out, and I'm still confused now. Like, why did Henry have to put in all these stakes and they lose all this money with like 12 to 1 odds? That's crazy. Uh, and the machine only had to do one stake. Why is that, Eddie? Why is that? I'm so confused. I don't know. I'm uh, not well versed in the physics of rock splitting. <laughs> rock sp- 
a rock splitting. Anyway, so sorry, I had to get that match off my chest quickly because I just I'm still thinking about it uh, to the to 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 today. But anyways, so yeah, so I, I mean, I've seen it, but I, it was definitely wasn't a classic for me. Who? Um, well, let's just go through because this movie pulls on some pretty big actors. Um, surprisingly enough, um, you have got the um. Patrick Swayze. The one and only Patrick Swayze as a main character as Pecos Bill. Pecos Bill himself. Then um, you get Oliver Platt as um, as Paul Bunyan, which um, Oliver it's good Platt. to see. Yeah, I mean, we haven't seen have him, him in, back. We haven't seen him since, in a year since he did Three, mu- since, three, three Musketeers. <laughs> this is much better. This is a much better outing for him as... Uh, as Paul Bunyan than one of the three musketeers. It's, it's less creepy. This I mean, time. Uh, it's, it is better in the sense of, yes, it is, it is less creepy. He is in his vintage self in this as well. Uh, we're not asking sure. him, we're asking him to walk around. Like, I mean, to say, who would you pick to be a lumberjack? <laughs> I don't know that Oliver Platt is my first choice, but they no. had him with a, a hat and this big outfit. But, so he but if you're looking look for like, somebody, if you're looking for somebody to have like an o, like over the top, larger than life persona, he's yeah. a great person. And he's a, he's a big guy, you know? I mean, he just has a presence about him and that's Paul Bunyan. You know, he's kind of a big guy. Now you're right. Doesn't, exude the idea of lumberjack but they put a pretty good costume on him and uh it works out i love like the hat that's just like a the end of a log on yeah. There. <laughs> yeah exactly oh my goodness um who else do you have any roger aaron brown is john henry uh you have got um scott glenn as jp styles he shows up as a villain and a lot of other things and then, of course, we were actually brought her up right before we started recording. You have Catherine O'Hara as Calamity mm-hmm. Jane, who is comedy royalty by this point. Can we just call her that? Yep. And everything that she has done. Um, yes, just fun characters all the way through. Even even some side people that ended up having bigger careers like Je- Jared Harris. He was one guy that was kind of like the lacking here, um, but then he goes on to have a lot more. So he's he's the number one villain in one of the Sherlock Holmes uh, oh, yeah. films. Um, he is also in Mortal Instruments, Benjamin Button. There's several films that he is a part of, um, and it's a big, it's a big. Uh, he's a you would you recognize him right away, but in this film, he's literally I think he's called like Thug Pug or something like that. He. He had a, he was an a, interesting role in this. He had a great role in Fringe, one of my favorite TV shows. From yes, the that is really correct. Really good in Fringe. Yeah. So yes, there's a, there's a lot of lot more actors in this than I was remembering. Partially because Swayze has his giant stash and a hat on the whole time. Oliver Platt's in everything he's got going <clears> on. Um, but William H Macy appears in this film. He's got a little bit of a uncredited role yep so yeah so was very surprised to remember who all was in this film uh for sure scott glenn is a funny character so he uh he came back in at he was in the daredevil series uh recently but he if you look at some of his films he was in he was that guy that was in the most random, if I'm remembering this correctly, knockoff films that are like, instead of Pirates of the Caribbean, he was in Caribbean Pirates and stuff like that. He had this whole off, really? uh, uh, off scene. Uh, I don't even know what the right word is for it. Um, but he did a ton of movies. Um, I, I'm having a hard time. Maybe I'm thinking of a different actor. I think you're thinking of somebody else because he's might be. been in like, He's been the in a Bourne, ton of big things. He was in several of the Bourne movies. Um, he was in uh, Training Day. He was in W's and Secretariat. But you know the people who did like Sharknado and stuff like that? There's like this group of people making these just awful movies. And there's an like, actor. And I swear it was him. So now now you need to figure this out while or 
I'm scrolling his filmography on I don't, Wikipedia yeah, I think and I'm I don't see it. Different. Yeah. Mm. So anyways, you're gonna have to just keep on talking while I try and figure out <laughs> oh, what, what I down what here. am I talking about? Just keep filling. Okay. Uh so Eddie, what was the nostalgia moment for you? <laughs> I, there's just these moments when you get very focused like this that I don't know. I don't know exactly what to do with it. Um, and I'm, I know I have my moments as well where you're like, uh, okay. I'm like, oh, yeah, you really want to figure out who is in Sharknado. Yeah. And there's no stopping you now. I'm trying to, to, <sighs> to do it slyly on the, back, on the back end while you continue mm-hmm. with the conversation, but... Uh, so why is this nostalgic for me? Well, one, um, you know, I grew up very much uh, loving the Americana stories. Like my family is all from like right on the banks of the Mississippi, um, oh. just south of Hannibal, Missouri, which is uh, Mark Twain territory and all of kind of the... Um, Tom Sawyer, Huck Finn stories. Uh, my grandpa always would sing a lot of the old Americana songs that had kind of these tales in them and stuff. And so I remember as a kid just loving this movie of celebrating these tales of, of, of American folklore. Uh, and I had several just kind of books of Appalachia and Western folks, folk stories and I don't know. I just always have been kind of fascinated with our version of fairy tales, right? Like Europe has fairy tales, which are kind of mystical and creepy, you know, and American um, fairy tales or folklore are just these stories of over the top, extraordinary people um, who do crazy things that are, you know, a of course, a tall tale, um, but it's told as if it is true, right? Yeah. Um, Pecos Bill, Paul Bunyan, John Henry, you pick them. Um, and and I think that's why I just always loved this movie so much as a kid is because it um, not just visualized, but kind of put them out there as kind of true, true life heroes and, you know, just kind of took their stories to the next level. And I really, I don't know. I, I wanted to go on this adventure as a kid. And I think that's what's so much fun about this movie is that it is a, um, a let loose, just kind of let it, let it all, you know, have fun. It's a fun adventure tale that doesn't take itself too seriously. You know, there's obvious plot holes. There's obvious (laughs) just kind of, (laughs) What? How in the world is this happening? And of course, they they take full liberty in this. This is all imagined by this kid who's taking a nap in the boat, right? So anything can happen because it's it's a dream, or is it? Because they do show up at the very end. Um, and and to me, I I, I enjoy that. Like, let's suspend reality and dive into our imaginations. And this film does that to the nth degree, and I love that. And I just love all these characters. There's so many fun characters with cool lines. Eddie, this is where we diverge. I, this was definitely one. It was hard to watch and I had to what? keep skipping portions of it just to get through scenes because no. now I, I no, admit, no, 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 I, no, I admit, no, no. <laughs> I admit that there's certain things that the moment I see, you know, there's like like actors or uh, genres that are like cat catnip. You're like, yes, let me get. I want it in as soon as possible. For me, it's like uh, reporter, investigative mm. movies, things like that. For you, it's spotlight. For you, it's anything with Chicago and um, end of the world, and aliens, like that. end of the world. Yes. There's also the reverse movies that. You're like, I'm, I have zero desire to see this. And for me, it's Westerns. <gasps> this, because this is basically a Western. It is. It is basically a Western. It's basically a Western. Early, early 1900s. Uh, I, I was already kind of coming and kicking and screaming to 
to watch this. I was always like, oh, I gotta watch Tall Tale. Do you not like any Westerns? My list of Westerns, I think I was pleasantly surprised with the remake of True Grit. I was like, okay. Yeah, let's stick with some of these remakes. Okay, like, did you like like 310 to Yuma? I don't think I, I don't even, I don't even think I saw it through 10 to Yuma because I was just did, like, I'm not did interested. You s- did you see the remake of Magnificent Seven with Denzel Washington? Did I? Maybe. Yes. That was like, it had a crazy ending battle scene and stuff like that. That was good. I, I've never been a Western person. I've never been a lone oh. gunman style. Um, see, films. and maybe this is where like. It. I my wife wishes she could live in that time period, and I me too. I would hate me it. too. I remember as a kid all the time thinking, "How awesome would that be?" As a kid, you could just hop on a horse and go anywhere you want. And I hated that. You know, we grew up in a time where it was like, "No, you can't do that." Like, you have to drive. We could ride our bikes a lot of places, and I I can remember riding my bike down to the Crystal Flash of Pittsburgh, thinking. This is kind of like I was riding a horse in the Wild West. Because I love Westerns. Grew up watching them. I'm so happy Taking you, Taking Abby. trips out to the West. I've been to a lot of these places that the, the movie references. I'm, oh. so, I'm so happy for you, Eddie. I, I wish you the best. Did you ever see the that? original Calamity Jane movie starring Doris Day? No, I didn't. I'm sorry. <gasps> You know who Doris Day is, right? Yes. <sighs> I was going to say, I'm going to have your wife come up and strangle you right now if you would say no to that. <laughs> well, you need to see that. You need to find a copy of, um, of, uh, of Calamity Jane starring Doris Day. So good. I yeah so I I was already kind of kicking and screaming coming into this uh I was not very invested in this kid and his dad's fight that leads to um the, the him running away and the dad for some odd reason just won't even think about selling his land even though he's getting a crazy good deal for it I he suddenly gets into a boat and then he's in the middle of a freaking desert I, I'm like, are we in a dream? Is this real? I can't remember what happened. Um, and just there, I wasn't into it. I wasn't into everything felt shiny and I don't even know what the right word is for. I had a hard time evoking like why I was just uninterested in the majority of the story. And it's mostly has to do with the very fact that I didn't want to watch it in the first place <laughs> and it didn't come off as surprising or new or any of the things. Cause I, I was just ready to be done. I, I may or may not have skipped through several things where I'm like, if I click 10 seconds, am I going to miss anything? No, there's still no, doesn't matter. I didn't miss anything. Okay. You didn't skip through Catherine O'Hara as Calamity Jane. No, Please tell I, me. I, I, yes. I, I stuck through that. That was, that was fun. That's one of my favorite um, back and forths in, in, I mean, it, it, in most movies. I love a good tit for tat, just kind of back and forth, ping pong like that. And when she comes in, well, paint my toenails and curl my hair. And he's like, oh, calamity, my cactus flower. Don't you, don't you cactus flower me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, yeah, sorry. You um, just lost, I just lost some, some respect for you. Just. Yeah, I was Not wasn't, even, not even giving it a fair shake. I'm sorry. It's not going to grade out very well for me when we, when we get to actually rating this thing. I was, I just wasn't invested. <laughs> I'm sorry. This kid was kind of whiny, kind of being, kind of do, kind of doing a little bit of what Emma Watson was doing in the Beauty and the Beast remakes. Um, <laughs> kind of being like, you know, these cars are going to be the future, and just kind of holding it over people's heads. Like, come on, don't be that guy. Do did you at least uh, of the four? Who 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 do you like the most? Is is there one that you would say? Okay, I somewhat enjoyed 
Pecos. John. Do I have to choose? Paul. Calamity. Do yep. I have to choose? I don't want to choose. Can I can I choose Blue the Ox? Or Babe the Ox? No. You found none of the four characters at all intriguing or interesting? I, I just wasn't. I was like, just let's just get this thing over with. Where are we going with this again? He's going to go back and save the farm, maybe? Like, he's just trying to get home? Okay. So I, want, I want this kid just to have his comeuppance. <laughs> <laughs> so sad. You have no imagination. Who was, who was the uh who was the uh your favorite? Where's the childhood bliss? The wild imagination set free in the big sky of the American West. Where JB? Have you been an old grumpy man your whole life? No, I've just been loving living in the future. <laughs> this is very true. If we stop and we analyze this, do you want to be starving in I, working on a farm all day? I am far more the nostalgic one of loving history and the past. With, Eddie, you're like, living in the past and you're happy Multiple for it. times, I, I can tell you the different eras that I, I am a misplaced soul. You love Tomorrowland. I love Tomorrowland. Right. Let's just play this game. Let's just play this game. Lands at Disney, Fantasy, Tomorrowland, Frontierland, and Adventureland. We'll we'll kick Liberty Square out because we're just talking Disney Disneyland. What is your favorite of the four? Yeah, I definitely go or with, Main Street or Main Street. Yeah, I definitely well, you go with Tomorrowland. You definitely go with Tomorrowland. Mine, if we're at Disneyland. Main Street USA, hands down, no questions asked. Yeah, exactly. And so is my wife. She would love. She would love to be there. She would love to just be dressed as all those characters. The, the last time we were at Disneyland, Lincoln, Lincoln uh, uh, the Lincoln. Um, yeah. Well, if you remember, you got there late, and the three of us got to Disneyland like an hour and a half before you. You had something at work that you needed to wrap up, and we spent the whole hour and a half just on Main Street USA, all three of us. And we're having like the time of our life. And when we got there, you're like, you haven't even left Main Street? And we're like, <laughs> no, it's amazing. Now, oh, if we're goodness. in Disney World, because they are different, it's Adventureland. I love Adventureland, that old kind of retro exploration. I love all that. And I could care less about Tomorrowland. I just find it, eh. And you see... I just love Space Mountain. Space Mountain is the best. I love now, everything about it. The new Giacchino score for Space Mountain, I was actually just listening to earlier today. That is really good. That's funny. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> See, it's a good thing Tomorrowland the movie isn't coming up on our list. Because I think we may be on opposite ends. See, of this, this is discussion. the thing with this is the thing with Tomorrowland. I know it's not a good movie. I know it. I know that it's it's hokey and it's quirky, all the things. And I, but there's something about it that makes me happy inside. Mm. And it's mostly the music. The majority of it is probably the music. And my wife, every time I watch it, is always like, "I don't understand why you like this movie." You and own it like, on DVD. I own it on Blu-ray. Yes. On bl oh, oh, Blu-ray. Blu-ray. Blu Eddie, I stopped watching DVDs like forever ago. <laughs> Anyways, except for when our um, when our when our internet goes out, and then I have to resort to our binder of DVDs and Blu-rays. Yes. <clears throat> so this is how I feel for Tall Tale. Like it just hits those elements. Do I you love know it's not a good movie inside? I know. I know it's not like the best made movie of all time. Like it bombed at the box office. It doesn't get brought up in any major. Nobody's uh, talking about this. Film. Nobody's no talking about no Tall one, Tale. No one's searching yeah. right now for a free version of Tall Tale to watch online. <laughs> exactly. Like they're searching for Wild Hearts Can't Be Broken exactly. and find our podcast because it's instead. Yes, exactly. <laughs> okay. But it is one that like I will go back and watch on a, on. Not a regular basis, but on a frequent enough basis. It'll be one that 
I will definitely, when my kids are old enough to enjoy and remember, we're going to have a big family movie night and watch it as well. Like, I thoroughly enjoy this movie and love it so much. I'm happy and for I, you. And I'm, and I'm sad for you. It's okay. You can be sad for me. It's okay. <laughs> Eddie, right now, I'm literally just right now sending you, I figured out the, the solution to the thing that was confounding me earlier. There's, there's this, this company. It's a production company. They were really big in the mid 2000s and like the 2000s. It was, it was a it was a company called Asylum Films. Mm-hmm. They they literally just said what's coming up that people are super excited about. We're gonna make it the same type of film on a really 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 low budget, fast fast quick, so it comes out near the same time. So per, it was primarily so when you're shopping at Blockbuster, when your you would- film that you're looking isn't in stock. You look over and say, oh, Pirates of the Caribbean isn't there, but you know what is there? Caribbean Pirates. You know what? (laughs) Snakes on a plane is gone, but Snakes on a train, it's there. And I just. Wasn't Snakes on a plane a B movie as well? No, because it. it, I don't know if it's quite. I don't know what you classify, because it still has (laughs) Samuel L. Jackson in it. Yes. And the only reason he did that film. And he made them promise that in his contract, I will only do this film if you call it Snakes on a Plane. Like right. I, if you change the name of it, I will not be in this film and change his, his iconic line uh, from that film. So I just texted you over a guy named, uh, an actor named Lance Henriksen. They do look who familiar. Looks very familiar compared to the guy that's in this film who play um, Scott Glenn, who plays JP Styles. Um, very close character uh, guy. They play the exact, exact same type of person. Bad guy. Um, uh, that kind of like old, crusty. Like, oh, he he doesn't care. He's gonna he's gonna blow up the whole world to get what he wants. He's in several of these asylum films. They're all bad. They're all very much B movies and. Um, we went through a time where we would rent them regularly kind of in late high school and in college. Yeah. Uh, because, Oh, the Da Vinci treasure. That's one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Pirates of treasure Island. I just love like, the link that you said me is Lance Hendrickson takes on zombie vamps and first bloody trailer for daylight's end. Eddie, all I did was I was just I I tried I found Asylum Films and I just looked up several of their things, tried to find <laughs> I just needed a good photo of him so you could see yes. him looking at his best. Um, yeah, it's great. H.G. Wells, something that's it, they, they, this was the same time as War of the World. There's so many of these instead of Transformers, it's Transmorphers. <laughs> There's just so many bad films death racers instead of death race it's journey to this like it's there's just so you should just go on there and just look at all and and we went through a a time of just watching all of these um and i believe that they also went on to do sharknado i'm pretty sure they've that they were the the creators of sharknado but anyways you should look up just asylum films and go see if you can find some of their bad films and watch and especially Lance Hendrickson. Sorry, that is my tangent. Uh, I really need to get that off my chest. We spent way too much time talking about this. It was a really good tangent, but like any good tangent, they must come to an end <laughs> and we must rate this film. One. I'm giving it a one. I'm giving it. I'm not it, watching this film again. I'm giving it three and a half. Why? Because it's 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 one I love. I do love Westerns. So things set in the West like this are fun to me. Um, I love the kind of episodic storytelling of the four different kind of characters uh, and that they bring the, you know, the Americana folklore to life. Um, And I'm always going to be a sucker for films that are just wild imagination. There you go. Any, any. And I will, and I will 
watch this movie again multiple times. I I had watched this movie without uh, needing to watch it for this podcast. <laughs> And I only watched this because I needed to watch it for a podcast. So this was one of go. the movies we watched a year ago uh, during quarantine when we first locked down. Did um was there a montage in this in this film? There is the like a mirage. Scene. Oh, the mirage. Yeah, I don't know if we the, could classify the second, the second it as cousin a true to montage. The, yeah. <laughs> the second cousin to the montage, the fake montage that he isn't really real. Right, right. Okay, I will bless bless your heart. Any uh, the the moral of this story really is: if you get an offer for your land that's too good to be true, you should just take it so you don't get shot. Well, that's, that's what I'm moral. working on. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Yes, I don't know. Well, that's a good tip. Um, I don't know if I have any any good tips here. Yeah, hold on tight whenever you're riding a cyclone because it can it can throw you for a loop. Literally, literally. And with that, we have ended this episode of Honey. We made a Disney podcast talking. Mm. Oh no, are you saying we're not done? No, I am. I was going to tease us to the next movie. Well, go ahead and tease us for the next movie, Eddie. The next movie is a certifiable Disney cult classic that is like got clothing lines after it. It's got huge following. Did you grow up watching this movie? Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm, I, feel, I feel like we shouldn't say it out loud just because... The last few times we have said the movies out loud, we come back to find out that we can't actually watch it on Disney+. No, Plus. I, but this one we can because I've already watched you've, you've already, it. We need to go through our list and, and just go through and just double check. Okay, can we? No, yes, know, no, I yes, know. no. Go ahead and get rid of them now because otherwise we're going to be in for a world, world of hurt. Yeah, Squanto's tail is not on Disney+. Plus. <laughs> I can't even say it without laughing. <laughs> We were but, never, even if it was on there, we were never going to review that film. No, no. But a goofy movie is, and we will be reviewing it on next week's podcast. So subscribe, listen wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. Please give us a like, recommend us to friends. Uh, we would love to hear from you if it is a five star rating and only a five star rating. Otherwise, Otherwise just care. keep it to yourself. Exactly. Yep. yep. Thank you for listening. 